Because of the hard work that Laverne and our forebears put in during our story pass, we no longer have to bargain things like duty-free lunch, which was not always a given. We don't have to bargain non-professional duties like cleaning our classrooms and emptying trash. We don't have to bargain to get guaranteed prep periods and other things that we take for granted today. But the struggles still persist and there will always be struggles to push back on. In this latest struggle to secure advances in our next contract, we were able to come away with charter school recognition in our contract for the first time ever. <laughs> Improvements to the grievance process when a grievance involves more than one member, paving the way for electronic signing in in the future, <laughs> expanding early release time opportunities to general education teachers for IEP meetings, additional language on the protection of personal information, as well as more protective language on harassment, discrimination, and bullying free workplaces, requiring that administrators document actions taken around health and safety complaints, improvements to due process for those placed under investigation, instituting a pilot program where guardrails in place for teachers should a school have to close for short or extended periods of time continuing and creating work groups for teacher transfer, English learners, EES, special education, student discipline, Hawaiian education, CTE, and teacher leaves. Those are the ones that don't involve money directly in your pockets. And for some of them, you may think they're small and inconsequential for you until something happens and you rely on precise language to push back against administrators who will often find a way to make things more difficult for you. With regards to money in your pockets, we've secured increases to supplementary pay amounts that have not changed for a very long time, updating mileage rates to be in line with IRS allowances and increasing paid time when you have to fly for work, especially for our neighbor island members, embedding 21 hours with extra pay, extra PD and pay permanently into the contract so we don't have to beg every year. Increases to the health plan contributions, where if current health plan enrollments were taken or to remain constant, the employer is going to eat 95% of the total additional cost to the whole unit. <laughs> Reworking emergency higher pay to something much more livable than what they're currently getting. <laughs> Step movements to stave off compression once more and significant payouts to those who did not receive compression adjustments earlier this year. And finally, the creation of class eight. Remember, while we have a list of things that we wanna to find to be wins, the employer was also motivated to come up with a list of wins for themselves. That's how negotiations go. One of their wins is surrounding class eight. Their win is requiring that sheltered instruction professional development be completed. Their win is that only credits from July 1st, 2023 and beyond be recognized. But our win is bringing the credit requirement down from 30 credits that they wanted down to 15 credits like all other classes to move. More than half of our negotiations team are at class seven and have banked credits that the state is saying they and others now have to throw away. This was an extremely tough pill to swallow for all of us. But in the end, class eight was determined to be so important by the team because it will then become established for future generations to come. Just like Laverne and her colleagues from years past fought for things we take for granted now, there's always compromise involved. How many of you remember the true up salary schedule? <laughs> this was a salary schedule put out in 2011 that was 28 steps with a little each step and was based on the number of years of service that you had. Notwithstanding other issues with that particular contract involving teacher evaluations and race to the top, once we voted that package down, the true up salary schedule was never something the state would agree to again. That one opportunity was gone for good. 
And I worry that the same could be true for class eight. Some claim that we're fear mongering. No, it is our duty to let members know what happens if they vote a contract down. We don't want members to say, I didn't know if we voted it down, we would lose this. All I'll say is don't let perfect be the enemy of good. This is a good package that your negotiations team secured and your board of directors unanimously agreed to put out recommending gratification to the bargaining unit. In 2011, part of the reason that that contract was voted down was because not enough time was given to consider everything that was agreed to. I will tell you that we've had legislators question us, asking us, why are we taking so long to vote and cutting it so close to the end of the legislative session? The reply is that we are giving our members time to digest the contents of this tentative agreement. We're gonna have a webinar on Monday to explain the nuances and answer questions. And members will have the opportunity to make an informed decision next Wednesday. I urge you to show up to vote to the voting sites, urge you to get your colleagues to show up at the voting sites, and I urge you to vote yes to ratify this tentative agreement. Who's with me?